to Freckles and Blondie, your weekly lost podcast. Before we start the episode today, um, we need to explain our title. We do. <laughs> we didn't do that in the intro. Our bad. <laughs> it kind of skipped our minds and we were very focused on what we were doing. Yes. If you have seen Lost before, you probably already get it. Right. <laughs> And if you haven't, you're going to get it soon. Basically, we were channeling the best character on Lost, Sawyer. (laughs) Debatable, but go on. (laughs) And two of his favorite nicknames are Freckles and Blondie. And I so happen to have blonde hair, and Randy so happens to have some freckles. So it just kind of came to us that way. (laughs) Yes, that was Tiffany's brilliant idea. So it seemed very fitting. You know, maybe if you say something I really like, I'll start calling you Freckles. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, fingers crossed. (laughs) I know it'll be your dream. (laughs) Yeah, that's all I hope for. (laughs) (laughs) So today we're going to talk about episode one, The Pilot, Mm -hmm. which was written by J.J. Abrams and Damon Lindelof. Directed by J.J. Abrams, who happened to win an Emmy for this episode. I mean, no big deal. (laughs) No big deal at all. And I mean, J.J. Abrams, I think it's pretty safe to say he's he's pretty good. Yeah, he's done pretty well for himself. (laughs) Yeah, I think maybe he'll go on to do great things after this. Yeah, (laughs) maybe. Just maybe. Yeah, and this was also, I read one of the most critically acclaimed television pilots of all time. It's considered like one of the best pilots ever made. Well, it is. <laughs> yeah, definitely. In my humble opinion, right. I agree. <laughs> I agree as well. <laughs> yeah, and they had the craziest budget of all time. Yeah, they did. Yeah, did you read that too? I read it cost like around $14 million. Yeah. Which is insane. But it makes sense when you watch it and it's visually, like I think you said this in the intro, it looks like a movie. It's incredible. It's so beautiful and It's just so cinematically filmed Mm -hmm. and like they really just took their time with it. I was just so super impressed. Yeah, me too. So what were your first impressions of the whole episode like overall? I loved it. It was great. It kind of immediately sucks you in. Like when you, when it opens with Jack waking up and like his eye, his pupil dilating. Yeah, I felt exactly the same way. When I first saw this, I'm just thinking back okay. to... Like the very first time? Yeah. To, um, wow. It's been 13 years. Is that right? <laughs> oh, that's disgusting. Yep, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. It's been so long. But thinking back to that, just I never get hooked by the pilot. I always have to wait a few episodes to know whether I'm going to like a show or not. Me too. And this was one of those rare shows that I just instantly knew that they were going to be focused on characters and that it was going to be my kind of show. Right. It just seemed, it seemed so self-assured. Like the writers knew exactly what they were doing from episode one, minute one. I feel like a lot of other TV shows, they kind of have to get used to the idea, kind of figure out what they're doing. It takes maybe four or five episodes to get going. I feel like with Lost, they're like, this is what we're doing and this is how it's going to go. And they did it and it was great. (laughs) Yeah, it's just like total confidence. They go yeah. like, they're not rushing it. They're just like, this is what this show is. And you're going to freaking love it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and they were right. Yes, they knew what they were doing. And I was amazed at how like, true to character, all these characters seemed from the very start. Oh, that's so true. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. I was just like watching people, even when they didn't have lines, like they just, were exactly who I expected them to be. Yeah, absolutely. Why don't we get into the episode? Because I know this is going to take us a really long time. Yes, it is. (laughs) Because this is a two-part episode for the pilot. So we're going to try and squeeze this in and hopefully not take too long. But there's a lot to talk about. There is. We'll see how it goes. But um, yeah, you're going to do the breakdown for the first part and I'm going to do it for the second part. Yeah. All right. So we open with the like most iconic shot in Lost. Mm -hmm. It's like the close up of Jack's eye opening. And we zoom out and we see him wearing his suit lying amidst the bamboo trees. Mm -hmm. (laughs) 
hearing nothing but sounds of the jungle. He gets up slowly, and after a brief visit from a yellow lab, he pulls out a tiny airline bottle of alcohol. And I think we're supposed to be wondering, like, what kind of crazy bachelor party he's been at. <laughs> it does kind of look like that. Like his, He's, like, hobbling around. Yeah. You know? It's, like, yeah. kind of weird. <laughs> it is a little strange. But, you know, we, like, we know the title of this show, so right. I don't think anyone is fooled. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> so I, we start, like, really quiet, and then he rushes through the jungle, and then he's on the beach, and suddenly everything is just, like, chaos. Yeah. The camera flits around. It's super sporadic. It's focusing on one person and then another. And we watch Jack just kind of, like, hone in on each person in distress. And then finally, he kind of, like, zooms in on one person who's trapped under some equipment. Mm-hmm. And immediately, he just leaps into action. That's Jack. <laughs> <laughs> That's Jack. <laughs> and I just, I love that tone shift in the beginning, how you're just like in the jungle and it's all quiet and you're like, huh, I wonder what happened to this guy. Right. And then he just kind of like wanders through the jungle and then boom, like it's just loud and it's confusing and you just see it all through his perspective. Yeah, it's so good. It's so good too the way when he first burst out of the jungle like it's quiet immediately and you don't see anything but like the pristine beach and mm-hmm. then it slowly swings around like you said and everything is just loud and chaotic and there's smoke and wreckage it's really well done yeah so jack helps that man up and in the distance there's more screams and he rushes over and he helps claire and claire is pregnant and having contractions and she is freaking out And Jack tells her she's going to be okay and calls Hurley over Mm -hmm. and gives him some instructions and helps her before rushing off to the next person. (laughs) Yeah. He's got like a a to-do list going on here. He's just going from one person (laughs) to the next. So he rushes over to the next person and he helps, he resuscitates Rose. And I forgot that that had even happened. (laughs) I did too, actually. (laughs) I was like, oh, wow, that's Rose. (laughs) Right. Yeah. As he's resuscitating Rose, he looks back at Claire and sees that a piece of plane is about to fall on her. Claire is just like, doom. (laughs) Yeah, she's having a bad day. (laughs) Yeah, she's having a bad day and just like bad luck is following her. Yeah. (laughs) So he immediately runs back to save her and Hurley and the three of them make it out just in time. So at this point, we're five minutes into the episode and Jack has saved the man under the airplane, Claire, Rose. Claire again, and Hurley. (laughs) He's so great. (laughs) (laughs) I know you love him so much. (laughs) I really do, guys. I really, really do. (sighs) And I can't stand him. (laughs) I know. This is, this is where I lose like so many people. Maybe not. I feel like some people, a lot of people don't like him, but I mean, I just, you get immediately taken in with him. He's just so together. He's so, like in this situation, <laughs> I would be Shannon, who's just standing on the beach, just screaming. Like that would be me. <laughs> I would never be doing what Jack is doing. It's crazy. <laughs> I feel like the show wants us to like Jack, though. This is the classic hero setup, you know? Oh, absolutely. It's clearly his perspective. He's doing no wrong. He's just saving one person, then the next, like almost like unbelievably so. Yeah. You're like, okay, one person is not this amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But Jack is. He notices everything. He does. <laughs> he's on top of it. And he's like wounded throughout this whole thing too, which you find out later, which is even more. Yeah. Ridiculous. That's true. I don't usually think about that. Yeah. I guess it's a little more impressive. <laughs> I mean, when does, do you just not like him immediately? Like, do you not like that hero type? Or you just, not, you're like, not yeah, I it? usually don't like that hero type. Okay. It's really rare. Um, I don't know. I don't, I like right now in the episode, I don't really dislike him. I'm just kind of neutral. Okay. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> so moving on, Jack finds a secluded section of the beach and who so happens to stumble upon him but a very emotionally traumatized looking Kate (laughs) (laughs) who tells Jack that she is a whiz with a sewing machine, but not so keen on needle and threading human flesh. He explains that it's really no big deal. And she ultimately concedes to stitching up his wound for him. She asks Jack if he has a thread color preference to which he says, no standard black indicating that, um, yes, he definitely does have a color preference and he is a liar. (laughs) 
Okay, <laughs> relax. <laughs> like, what does that line not bother you? Because it really bothers me. <laughs> How does it bother you? I like that line. Like he's like, no, I don't have a color preference. Black. That's yeah, a color. because black is like <laughs> the most boring color. So of course you would pick that. He's not going to pick like red or blue. That's not Jack. <laughs> I like that. I feel like that's very that's very in character for him to You're say right. that and pick that color. It definitely is. I'm just like, wow, what? That doesn't make sense. But I, I get what you're saying. <laughs> Our next shot is of Sawyer. And nothing happens. I just wanted to point that out. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the camera pans really slowly through the camp. Saeed's like building a fire and he asks Charlie to help. We see Rose kiss her wedding ring looking really worried, which is like the small lovely detail. Mm hmm. Yeah, actually, you know, I had written down that that shot of Sawyer they have, I think he's, like, smoking with, like, the wreckage behind him is, like, really beautiful. I mean, this whole episode is beautiful, but I yeah. did really like that shot, actually. Yeah. Even though it was Sawyer. <laughs> <But> <laughs> even though it was Sawyer. Yeah, I liked it, too. Like, especially because it was Sawyer. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was a really beautiful shot it in was. general. <laughs> it was. Enough so that we both know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. So... We cut back to Jack and Kate, and Jack tells Kate the story of how he once almost killed a girl in surgery. And he uses this line. He says the nerves spilled out of her like angel hair pasta, which, like, always gets me. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> mm, yeah, it's visceral. <laughs> he describes how he lets the fear in, and he counts to five. And then he can sew the girl right up. Super confident. Um, and Kate responds that she would have run for the door, to which Jack points out she isn't running right now. And I feel like this scene is just like, this is Jack and Kate, like, introduced in the most perfect way for them. Yeah, I know. I love this scene. I could talk about it for like 20 minutes. It's so <laughs> good. <laughs> it is. It's It's really good. I think the only thing I don't like about it is I feel like Kate comes off a little weak. Mm -hmm. she's not a weak person and she seems very fragile in this whole conversation she's all shaky about sewing him up and i don't know if she's intentionally portraying herself as weak or if she just maybe the actress didn't have a handle on like who kate was yet yeah, i that's, don't know that's possible i can see what you're saying because i feel like maybe she was trying to channel like the trauma of the plane crash and maybe it was mm -hmm. coming on a little bit stronger than she meant it to yeah because kate is just not damsel in distress girl like right not really no i mean you can see that in this episode this isn't like meant to be a spoiler kind of thing like in this episode she's the one who's adventuring right with jack the whole time she's running off into the jungle but like in this one conversation i just feel like she was very timid and like Talking about how she sews drapes in her apartment. And I'm like, what? Who yeah. is this girl? <laughs> yeah, that sewing drapes in her apartment line, when you think about what is revealed about her later on, it's weird. It's very weird. Like, would she say that? Would she do that? Would she sew drapes for her apartment? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think she would, but I, I think she that. might lie and say that she had. Oh, that's true. That's a good so point. So that's the only way I can kind of like reconcile it in my head. <laughs> yeah. But I love, I love the connection between the two of them. They have so much chemistry. Yeah. I remember when I first watched this, after this scene, I was like, okay, I need them to be together. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was, I was all in. I was like, okay, these two are, yes, they're it. <laughs> you were passionately all in on the Jack and Kate. <laughs> yes. And I remained so throughout all six seasons. So if you don't like them together, you might want to stop listening to this podcast now. No, 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 no. You do not want to stop listening to this podcast because that just means you're on my team. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, we're going to have lots of fights about this. But That's okay. I, I like whenever I watch TV shows, I usually get really into like I find one couple that I just get obsessed with. Mm -hmm. And for me in this show, it's Jack and Kate. <laughs> it's yeah. Yeah. I don't feel like I really push for like a certain couple on this show, but I mm -hmm. just push for certain characters. I mean, I definitely like a lot of the couples on it. But yeah, they're not the only couple that I yeah. like, but they're the ones that like I just yeah, needed them to be together from from this point on. <laughs> <laughs> so we switch 
to Shannon, who is sitting beachside, completely confident in the group's would-be rescuers. She is painting her nails and avoiding chocolate bars until the rescue bo- boat comes. Oh, Shannon. <laughs> <laughs> she, you know, you know exactly who she is as soon as this episode starts. Right. And she does a good job portraying what she's supposed to be doing. Which she is, really does. <laughs> yeah. Hurley brings Claire some food and in super Hurley fashion sneaks her an extra serving because that's just how Hurley rolls. <laughs> Michael and Walt are sitting together, awkwardly quiet. Jen and Son are pretty much doing the same thing. Jack is examining a man with a very serious injury and Kate asks if he's going to live. Jack responds with his own question, asking if she knew this man. Kate says he sat beside her on the plane, which is not a lie. They recall the crash, and Jack says that he blacked out and remembers nothing, but Kate remembers the tail breaking off. The cockpit broke off, too, and Jack suggests that they go find the cockpit so they can send a distress signal through the transceiver. Kate seems totally amazed at this basic knowledge of airplanes and insists on coming if Jack is going to be adventuring to the cockpit. That, of course, is when you hear the mechanical screeching noise I just, it's so hard to describe. Like, I was trying to think, like, how do I even explain that noise? And it's just, you can't explain it. You just have to hear it. It's super intriguing. Like, to me, it's the mechanical part that always made me wonder, like, what the heck is that thing? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I don't know. There's just such a mix of everything. I feel like a different piece would probably interest every person. Yeah, that's, yeah, I agree. But we see trees being knocked down, so it's clearly like something pretty big. Mm -hmm. And mostly it's just loud and awful. So it sounds really bad, guys. (laughs) (laughs) Things are not looking good for this group of people. No. I think this is our first indication that this show is more than just like a scripted version of Survivor. (laughs) Yeah, which actually, I remember when I first saw commercials for this show... I thought it was just going to be just like Survivor. And I remember really? thinking, yeah, because I feel like the commercials were so vague and it was just like a group of people crashes on an island. And I'm like, what are they going to do for 22 episodes? Like sit on a beach and like <laughs> pray and like play in the sand? Like what, how is that going to be a TV show? It's going to be like Castaway, but 22 hours of it. <laughs> right. And I was like, that sounds awful. But then I remember. I think when I saw that scene of the whatever Monster in the Jungle, I was like, oh, okay, something really different and really bizarre is going on here. So, Yeah, I feel like that was the first sign. This is not a normal show. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So from here, we cut to our first flashback, which is like, I feel like this is quintessentially lost mm-hmm. to have your flashback. Every episode has this flashback structure. And it's usually focused on one character, but in the pilot, we go back to one event. We go back to the plane crash. So we're back with Jack, and he is sneaking extra booze from his friendly flight attendant. Yeah, they're doing a lot of flirting here. (laughs) They are doing a lot of flirting, (laughs) and Jack clearly needs a lot of alcohol. We don't know why. I feel like there's a lot of references to Jack and alcohol in this episode. I know, that's so weird. I wonder if that'll come up later. (laughs) I wonder why. (laughs) Yeah. He downs his bottle in one gulp, and the plane starts hitting turbulence. He tells Rose beside him that this is totally normal, and he tries to be really comforting. And honestly, this is when I start disliking Jack. (laughs) Why? (laughs) I know. I, like, like backed away from my headphones because I knew you were going to say that. (laughs) Oh, my God. Talk me through your thought process here, Tiffany. I. It's not the writing's fault. I think it's Matthew Fox. (laughs) Oh, you don't like him? No, I don't like him. (laughs) Oh, gosh. I, he just, he's so robotic to me. He's always very even toned. And while that's kind of a little bit his character, sometimes I just want him to stop doing that. Mm, I can respect that. I think part of like watching this for me, I need to figure out what it is in particular. I know it's partly the acting. And I know it's partly the character. And it's just, I think it's like this perfect storm of like frustration (laughs) because there are so many other characters and actors who I'm just like in awe of. So I think he suffers in comparison. Wow. That is so fascinating (laughs) because I feel, I mean, I can respect that. I mean, yeah, but I feel when I see him, like he immediately pulls me in, like he's just 
the guy. He's the hero. Like, if I was in this situation, I would be going to him for comfort. If I was talking, if there was turbulence on a plane I was on and he was sitting next to me and trying to comfort me, I would feel better. I don't know. There's something about him that I've always just trusted. Yeah. And really liked. And I just like, I mean, I like Matthew Fox. Yeah. But that's well, just and me. you're not the first person who has said that to me. Like, I know a lot of people really like him. And I think it's that same reason. Like, he has good quality about him. Right. You know, sometimes, especially like on TV and in stories, like that good quality to me just feels flat. Especially on Lost when all these characters are so complicated. Yeah. Not necessarily that he's like boring, but sometimes he's boring. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I disagree. But I will say I'm much more, when I watch TV shows and movies, I'm much more into or inclined to go with the good guy and the hero. Most of the time the bad guy is like, just turn me off. Well, I think they're supposed to. I think okay. that's, you have a good moral compass. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, in this flashback, the plane starts to go down, and then we cut right back to the beach. Jack is insisting that he can find the cockpit himself, and Kate is insisting on coming with him. And you just need to prepare yourself to see this scene like at least a hundred more times, you guys. At, at least. <laughs> At least. This is just like the Jack and Kate show. <laughs> I'm going. I'm coming. No, no you're, you're not. not. Yes, yeah, I am. Exactly. <laughs> Get ready. <laughs> yeah, I know. After that, the best scene in the entire episode happens. <laughs> Kate looks over at Locke and he smiles and reveals the orange inside his mouth and like... I just love this scene so much, it's so even though it good. means nothing. <laughs> it's just so intriguing and creepy because she's like taking shoes from a dead guy. And then uh -huh. she looks over and Log is just staring at her. It's great. It's great. Yeah. And he's just like, he looks really serious. And then he smiles and he's got this orange in his teeth. And yeah. It's just like, it's so weird. And I love it. It's like the best introduction of a character ever. It really is. It's so unexpected, too. Everything's been so serious up to this yeah. point. And I first, I feel like when you see that, you expect him to like get up and walk away and discuss, you know, right. she's like <laughs> taking shoes. From, I mean, he's, you know, she's doing what she's got to do, but it's also like awful. Yeah. But then he's just like, he's my, it's just, yeah, it's really well done. It's perfect. Hurley is suggesting that everyone takes care of the dead bodies in the plane. Saeed agrees, but Shannon wants absolutely nothing to do with it. Jack lets everyone know about his and Kate's impending adventures and leaves instructions for everybody on the beach while mommy and daddy go out. All right. He's trying <laughs> to keep people alive, okay? <laughs> I know. I mean, he's just like kind of assuming leadership and I just find that kind of weird. I mean, no one else is going to do it. That's true. Nobody else is stepping up. So I guess he's got to do it. Charlie decides to join Jack and Kate and oh, we learn that he was in a band. Wait, is in a band. Drive shaft. <laughs> <laughs> Locke is sitting on the beach staring at the ocean and the rain starts to fall and he just leans back and stares up at the sky with his arms open. I love that scene so I much. I do too. It's so lovely. And the music is so good. And it's, yes. Ugh, it's so good. I love that we like haven't gotten a word from Locke and yet he is like the most intriguing character to me right now. Right. Cause you're just thinking like, what is your deal? What He's, is up with this guy? Yeah. Like, you were just in a plane crash and you were clearly having the best day of your life. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on? It's so true. That orange must have been real tasty. Yeah. <laughs> As the rain pours, Jack and Kate and Charlie reach the cockpit. They climb inside and discover that the pilot is still alive. The pilot tells them lots of important plot stuff while Charlie takes a detour into the plane's bathroom. We learn that six hours into the flight, the radio went out and nobody could see where they were. They were a thousand miles off course when they went down. So any rescuers would be looking for them in all the wrong places. Basically, don't get your hopes up, guys, because things are not looking good. No. <laughs> But hey, he's got the fancy walkie-talkie, so there's that. Except that is not working. <laughs> of course. Because <laughs> this is lost, and things just don't go right. No, they don't. So then along comes unidentified scary machine jungle monster thing. 
All we see are shadows passing across the windows of the cockpit, and it's like, it's super creepy. It could be a dinosaur, for all we know. And everyone's looking really nervous, and the pilot leans out of the window to get a better look when he gets Why sucked do that? up by this scary monster <laughs> thing. Blood oh. smears across the window, and it just, like, suddenly looks like a horror movie. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this whole scene from when they first get to the cockpit to when they're climbing up and there's, like, all the dead bodies, mm -hmm. it is like a horror movie. Yeah. So, it's so scary. <laughs> like, something about the beach is just very, like, idyllic looking. Right. We get into the jungle and it is clearly a different place. Like, it is right. dark. It, I mean, it's raining in this scene. And I think that that kind of adds to the mood. It takes them forever to climb up this plane, first of all. <laughs> yeah, that's so true. And then they finally get to the pilot and he gets like sucked up by a monster as soon as they do. <laughs> I know. And Kate says later, I think in episode or part two, like, why do you, we won't be any safer on the beach than out there in the jungle. That was me. After that, I'd be like, I'm never setting foot in there <laughs> ever again. Yeah. Forget it. It's terrifying. Yeah, history shows that the jungle kind of sucks. Yeah. So anyway, true to horror movie fashion, Kate, Jack, and Charlie just run, and they do all the typical tripping and getting stuck on things in the process. Kate makes it to this, like, hollowed-out tree and, like, climbs inside and hides, and she screams and cries, and then she counts to five, recalling the story Jack told her. And, okay, I know I'm not, like, the Jack fan, but... That's really adorable. Do you like that? I do. I, I really like that. Love that. It was so cute. <laughs> it's a, it's a good callback, and it shows like he made an impression on her. Right. They have such a connection. Yeah. Because I mean, when she was the most scared, that's immediately what she thought of, and that's what she did. Yeah, and that's what Ugh. comforted her. Yes. Yeah. No, I'm on board sometimes, Randy. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I just love them a lot. I'm gonna try and dial it down, but. Yeah. <laughs> Charlie manages to find Kate, saying that Jack ran back to help him, but then they were separated. Kate insists on going back to find Jack. Charlie says that she heard him calling for Jack and reminds her, not for the first time, that his name is Charlie and he is a pretty swell dude himself. <laughs> I love Charlie. He's the I best. Know. He's funny. Kate totally ignores him and just heads off into the jungle to go find Jack. And, oh yes, the dead pilot hanging from a tree, looking... Really dang gruesome. And that's how part one ends. <laughs> Which is very abrupt, don't yeah. you think? It's super abrupt. It's super jarring. From the start of that show, it takes you really far. Yeah. Emotionally. Yeah, definitely. And I wanted to ask you here, I'm sure you've heard that in the pilot, Jack was supposed to die. Mm -hmm. It was supposed to be him up in that tree instead of the pilot. What do you feel like that would have been like? I mean, that would have been shocking. And I think that's why they wanted to do it, because you set him up as the doctor who's the hero, who's the new leader, helps everyone, and then he's dead. That would have yeah. been, I mean, that would have been shocking. I mean, I'm really glad they didn't do that. To me, if they had done that, I would have felt really betrayed mm -hmm. and like, okay, I don't trust the show is not going to... Ooh. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it would have been like a break of trust. I'm like, okay, I don't know about this. So. I hadn't thought about it that way. I have always thought of it like, that would have been really cool. <laughs> like, really? <laughs> you would have liked that? <laughs> Not just because it's Jack. Right. But because I've never seen a show set up like a main character and then just ax him, you know? Yeah, it's brutal. It is, and it. It would have made me feel like, okay, I'm not going to see what's coming in this show. And I, like that would have been really intriguing to me. But I see what you mean, how you would have felt like you weren't in safe hands. Like you wouldn't have known what to expect from this show anymore. Right. Like to me with the monster, like that is already intriguing enough. If mm -hmm. they had killed Jack on top of that, that would have just made me really nervous. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, no. I've heard that. The whole purpose in doing that would have been to set Kate up as the the new leader. That right. it would kind of force her into that role, which I think would have been really interesting. I would have loved to see that, but yeah, I can understand why they didn't do it for sure. 
Yeah. I think more people, and maybe I could be lying, but I think more people, it would have made more people angry than, yeah, you know, who thought it was really cool. Yeah, it was probably a good decision. So the pilot part two, which aired a week after the first part, which I mean, I don't remember watching this when it was on TV, but I feel like that would have driven me crazy just because... Yeah, I didn't know that it aired separately. Yeah, I I just assumed they did like a two hour event when it yeah. originally aired. So, but it does break down kind of nicely into two parts. That's true. So, like, it definitely ends on a cliffhanger, but there's a clear ending. <laughs> yeah, true. We open with Jack, Kate, and Charlie making their way back to the beach. Jack is trying to get the transceiver working, but is not having any luck. Kate asks what Charlie was doing in the bathroom, and he says he was getting sick. And then we flash back to Charlie on the plane. And so this is the second of our flashbacks? Yeah, I think so. Okay. So after, after he gets rid of the flight attendant, Charlie rushes to the bathroom where he indulges in some heroin, <laughs> as you do. <laughs> as you do. Yeah. <laughs> I would love to know, side note, I would love to know how he got that on the plane. I know. He pulls it from his shoe, which I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. That crafty Charlie. Yeah. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I was just wondering. But anyway, he, he drops it in the sink. But before he can retrieve it, the plane starts to go down. Charlie struggles back to his seat and we cut to black. So, yeah, that's kind of the opening scene. I do love like how we're getting the same event from so many different perspectives. Yeah, and the way they layer over each other is interesting. Uh Uh-huh. Like you just kind of see something happening in the background that we've seen close up already. And it's just, it's so complicated and in-depth. Yeah, it's really good writing. Also, side note, Charlie, the actor who plays in Dominic Monaghan, he was the reason I started watching this show. Really? Yeah, because he was in Lord of the Rings. Uh Uh-huh. Which I'm sure most people know. He played one of the Hobbits, and I was obsessed with those movies. So I didn't know that. (laughs) Yeah, so I saw those movies, like, so many times in theaters, I was obsessed. And then when I, like I said earlier, when I saw the commercials for the show, I was like, that looks really stupid. I don't know what they're going to do with that. But then when I heard he was going to be in it, I was like, okay, I'm watching this show. (laughs) (laughs) You know, I've always felt like they kind of played Charlie up in the beginning a lot, and... I think he did draw a lot of people in. I feel like, and this might not be true, but he was probably the most well-known actor on that show with like a couple of exceptions because I know Kate was pretty, like, I think this was her first major role. Like, I think a lot of them hadn't had, I mean, Lord of the Rings was like a huge movie success. It won like 14 Oscars. It was a huge deal. So I feel like a lot of people, yeah, that was like a pull for them. Mm -hmm. I can see that. Anyway, fun fact. (laughs) Coming back from the break, Shannon is clearly enjoying her life (laughs) post-plane crash on a desert island. She's just, you know... She's making the best of a bad situation. Sure, sure. Well, (laughs) She's an optimist. (laughs) That's what we'll call it. (laughs) So Boone comes up to her and asks her to help with the luggage, and she refuses. Boone walks away, and Shannon and Claire start talking. Shannon tells Claire that Boone is her brother, because I think Claire assumed, like we all did, that they were dating, because they have such a weird... Yeah, they have a weird vibe about them. They really do, which we'll go into more of that later. Yeah, I really liked that scene between Claire and Shannon. I felt like they were oddly, like, connected. Yeah. It was the first time I saw Shannon being, like, nice to somebody. That's very true. Maybe Claire just brings that out in everybody, like the protective quality in everyone. Because yeah. she needs it since bad stuff keeps happening to right. her. Right. <laughs> it's like, poor Claire. <laughs> I enjoyed that scene. And then, yeah, Claire obviously mentioned that she's worried about the baby, whom she hasn't felt moved since the plane crash. Yeah. I think something like that can bring out the humanity in anyone, even Shannon. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. So then we have Michael is out looking for Walt, his son, when he comes upon Sun and Jen on the beach. He asks Sun if she's seen Walt, but she doesn't speak any English. Um, Jen angrily tells her to bump up her shirt and Michael leaves. 
That does not leave me with a good first impression of Jen. No, it really doesn't. Like, you immediately get this, like, not okay vibe. Yeah, I'm immediately worried for Sun Mm -hmm. and immediately annoyed with Jen. Yeah. So we cut to Walt, who's looking for his dog, Vincent. Walt comes across a pair of handcuffs. Michael finds him and the two return to the beach. Then we have a hard cut to Said and Sawyer, who are just beating the crap out of each other. (laughs) Those are my guys. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Apparently, when Michael showed everyone the handcuffs, Sawyer assumed it was Said. Jack and Michael then show up and break up the fight, and Jack asks for help fixing the transceiver, and Saeed offers to take a look. Yep. So Sawyer's, like, clearly kind of racist, right? right? (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) I'll say it. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, it's not a great introduction for him. It's not. It's really not. It's a good thing we got that beautiful beach scene earlier. (laughs) (laughs) Yep. I noticed as we were going through this, that Sawyer's, like, first thing that he said about everyone was, like, very, like, he put everyone in a box right away. Mm. And and that's what he's doing to Saeed here. Right. Like, right off the bat. It's awful. It <laughs> is awful. He, he deserves to be punched in he the face. He really <laughs> does. Like, that's all I want to do throughout this whole episode, pretty much. He's so, <laughs> and I mean, the actor Josh Holloway is doing such a good job. He's great. But he's like, he's just yeah. so antagonistic about everything. It's like, oh, just shut yeah. up and sit down. Like, why are you <laughs> like this? There's a scene coming up where he is so not annoying at all. Okay. I want to hear about this scene. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. So Said and Hurley talk and introduce themselves. And Hurley finds out that Said was in the Republican Guard during the Gulf War. We cut to Kate, who's washing off at the beach and who's looking frankly, better than she has any right to look after (laughs) surviving a plane crash. Yeah. This scene, I was like, did they just want to, like, show everyone that we're going to have some, like, really hot people looking hot on the island? Is that what this scene is for? Because that's all I got from it. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's beautiful, but yeah, there's really, it doesn't have much of a point. I think I read somewhere, and I could be lying about this, but I think I read that originally they wanted Kate to be like completely naked and Evangeline Lilly, who plays Kate, since I think this was like her one of her first acting roles, was not okay with that. So she like was wearing what she was wearing in the scene, which was interesting. <laughs> um, way to go, Evangeline. Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's crazy. Why would you do that? It's yeah. so unnecessary. It is unnecessary, especially with like, t- I mean, with the way the plot was going to have that just come out of seemingly nowhere. Right. So Sun comes and finds her and seems to be trying to indicate to her that someone is looking for her. Okay, so then we have Said and Kate talking. Said suggests to Kate that they need to go to high ground to see if they can get a signal for the transceiver. I love, like, how instantly capable Said seems. Yes. I instantly trust that guy. Me too. He knows what he's doing. And he just, like, portrays this confidence that you don't even, like, second guess at all. Even with Sawyer running around calling him a terrorist, you're like, okay, that guy's clearly wrong, and this guy knows what's up. Right. He just comes across as so intelligent and, yeah, like you said, very confident. Yeah. I just love him. I love Saeed. Yeah. And I love Naveen Andrews playing him. He's so good. He is so good. He's one of my favorites. So then Kate goes over to talk to Jack, and she tells him she's going on a hike, which I love that. Just the, like, not I'm going to, I'm going in the jungle with Saeed to try and fix this transceiver. I'm going on a hike. (laughs) You know, I'm going back to the place where we just saw the pilot get horribly, horribly killed. No big deal. Yeah. Don't worry. No big deal. It's it's fine. I just wanted some exercise. Right. I'm getting really bored here. (laughs) And I think I need to go and do some some hiking. I need fresher (laughs) air. (laughs) Right. Exactly. So Jack clearly wants to go, but he can't because he's trying to take care of the injured guy with the shrapnel in his chest. And he gives Kate the most obvious advice ever, which is, he says, if you hear anything or see anything, run. Um, yeah. Thanks, Jack. (laughs) I know, exactly. (laughs) I thought I would just sit there (laughs) and look at it. (laughs) Right. I mean, he's clearly worried about her, but yeah, he could have said something different. I don't know. In the next scene, we get a, like a peek into Sun and Jin's dynamic because Jin is like preparing this 
tray of food. Mm -hmm. And then he goes to take it. He takes it away. Or like son is trying to help and he slapped her hand. And then as he's walking away, she unbuttons the top button. Yeah. Of her blouse. That's right, son. Yeah. <laughs> Do it, son. <laughs> I love it. It's like the most rebellious button popping ever. <laughs> yeah. And the look on her face is, is great. Yeah. She's so <laughs> defiant. Mm -hmm. There's clearly more to this girl than there seems to be. Right. Yeah. I'm immediately intrigued by her. Mm -hmm. I feel like she's very memorable yeah. throughout this whole episode. Mm -hmm. And her performance is, you know, perfect. Basically, yes. everyone on the show is pretty amazing. <laughs> right. If you haven't guessed yet, everyone is great. Everyone is beautiful. <laughs> like, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. So Jin offers this tray of food i guess we'll call it to hurley and hurley's like no thanks i'm not i'm not doing that <laughs> yeah i'm with you hurley <laughs> yeah i feel conflicted about jen at this point because i'm feeling really bad about him but then he's also like preparing food and offering it to people yeah you know he's like trying to do his part so i'm like oh maybe he's not here i don't know yeah do you know what i mean no definitely i mean it is making some sort of gesture to kind of help everybody else. But he right. also, at one point, tells Sun, like, we're only going to worry about ourselves. Oh, that's true. So, I don't know. I really don't know how to feel about Jen at this point. Yeah. I'm conflicted about him. <laughs> we cut to Walt, who's reading a comic book in Spanish. And then we cut to Charlie, who's doing some more drugs on the beach. <laughs> Good old Charlie. Yeah. Oh, Charlie. Um, we go to Jack, who asks Hurley to help him find some antibiotics for the, personally for the guy with the shrapnel sticking out of his chest. Mm -hmm. Then we go to Shannon, who's just continuing to be pretty useless. <laughs> <laughs> she fights with Boone about, you know, how she's not doing anything. And then she sees Saeed and Kate leaving the beach to go on their hike, and she decides to go with them. Charlie, who seems to wander out of the bushes, also decides to go, and they're off on their hike. <laughs> I love how, like, Shannon is angry with Boone, and her way of getting back at him is to help people. Like, <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> like, you don't know anything about me. I'm going to go be so helpful right now. Right. It's so childish. <laughs> it <It's> is. <laughs> She's like a petulant teenager. <laughs> right. Because I feel like if she really thought about that, she'd be like, no, this is really dangerous. And then Kate doesn't want her to come. And Shannon's like, what? You're like two years older than me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and she is. But they portray themselves so differently. That they really do. She seems about 10 years older. She does. And I love how Charlie just wanders out and like, apparently, to me, it seems like he looks at Shannon and he's like, oh, you're hot. I'm definitely going on this hike. Yeah. Which, again, Charlie was also one of the people who just saw the pilot get horribly, horribly killed. And he's heading back into the jungle. Yeah. Crazy. I don't read Charlie as very intelligent right now. <laughs> no. I just feel like he's kind of like bopping around, being a little useless and like friendly. But he's just like doing drugs in an emergency situation. Right. He's clearly an addict, and it's sad. And yeah, he's not doing anything to help, really. Yeah, I mean, they're lucky that... What is it? Donahan? Is that his name? Donahan? Oh, Dominic Monahan. Don I just combined his name. <laughs> yeah, he did. <laughs> we can call him that. That's fine. <laughs> Donahan. Yeah. Dominic Monahan? <laughs> mm -hmm. I feel like he is so good and so likable. That, like, yeah. he really redeems Charlie, who should not be likable at all. That's true. No spoilers, but Charlie does some stuff later on in the show that makes me so mad, but I can't ever be that mad at him because, like you said, Dominic Monaghan is so charismatic and he's mm -hmm. so funny. Like, his delivery of lines is fantastic. I mean, so. you don't even have to go ahead in the show, just in this episode. He's yeah. just, he's being useless and... He's doing drugs, and he will help if someone asks him to, but I'm pretty sure someone asks him to every time. That's true. Except for in this situation where he's just following a pretty girl. Right. Yeah. But I love him. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So then we have a, sh a scene with Sawyer, who is shown reading a letter. It's so lovely. 
Yeah, he has such an interesting look on his face when he's reading this letter. He does. This is the scene, Randy. Okay. This is the scene that I love. We're like, okay. Hardly anything happens, but like you see this guy who we've seen, he's been so aggressive and so hard and he's just sitting there reading this letter and he just has this emotional look on his face and Josh Holloway, the actor, is so amazing. Yeah, he's great. He is so good at like giving this like really subtle performance Mm -hmm. that's like really emotional and there's like no reason for him to join these people. He's right. He seems to hate them. And you're like, why would he do that? Right. And then he just, he just does. And I feel like he read this letter and something in that letter makes him want to join them. Yeah. I was trying to figure out what it could have been that he would do that because he's, I mean, yeah, he just like, he was just punching Saeed like, what 20 minutes ago and now he's try he decided to come on this hike i know and everyone's like why are you coming with us and he's his response is just i'm a complex guy Ugh. and that's like all he says and i just i love it i love it so much i'm like yes yes you are you are a complex guy and i will yeah. figure you out oh god it's just <laughs> i do like that scene he um Josh Holloway does do a great job, but... I just think it adds dimension to this character, who before you could kind of write off as a psycho. See, at this point, I'm kind of writing it off as just being an asshole. Like, I'm like, why are you so (laughs) difficult? Yeah. Yeah. But... He is definitely difficult. Yeah. Anyway. (laughs) (laughs) The group hikes, and miraculously, none of them fall to their deaths. Because I don't remember that hike being that crazy it's like pretty on intense. the show it's like almost completely vertical yeah they're like scaling walls and stuff and i mean they've got shannon there clearly shouldn't be there charlie <laughs> and yet they all they all do it yeah nobody so, dies props to them i guess <laughs> <laughs> shannon's more capable than she thought yeah <laughs> on the beach jack tells michael he saw vincent in the jungle yesterday walt comes across Locke, who is setting up a game of backgammon He explains about the two sides, one is light and one is dark, and he asks Walt if he wants to know a secret. I love this scene. Yeah. It's so great. This is the first time that Locke talks, too. Yeah, that's true. And it's to Walt. Mm Mm-hmm. It's, like, equal parts great and, like, also a little creepy. Like, when when Mm -hmm. he says to Walt, do you want to know a secret, and it cuts away. Yeah. You You just get a bad feeling. Oh, I'm just like so excited. I'm like, what is he talking about? <laughs> I mean, I am too, but he's like an adult who's asking a little boy <laughs> if he wants to know a secret. I'm like, in the back of my head, I'm like, oh, this is like, I don't know. Again, like at this point, I'm like, what is your deal? Like, are you a serial killer? Are you just a nice man? Like, what's going on with you? <laughs> <laughs> I never thought about it like that. <laughs> yeah. That's what I think about. That's funny. I just, I immediately read that scene so thematically when he's really? just like explaining to Walt how in backgammon there's a light side and a dark side. And I'm just like, oh, oh, we're doing this. We're going deep into this, you know? Like mm-hmm. I just immediately start feeling all these like good and bad tensions and there's going to be conflict. That's true. I mean, that this scene does indicate all that. I don't think I picked up on it the first time I watched it, but yeah, it's it's key. Yeah, maybe not. This could be definitely me just reading a lot into it from my history with it and my English major overanalyzed things <laughs> nature. Right. Yeah, I think it's I always thought it was funny that he I mean, he's playing backgammon. Have you ever played backgammon? I have. Okay, I have too. We used to play it all the time when I was growing up, and it's such a fun game. Mm-hmm. But it's also it's also like very simple. Yeah, it's very classic. Yeah, so I don't know. I don't know why I like that detail, but I like that of all the games he could have been playing and setting up. It was it was backgammon. Mm-hmm. Oh, I like that he's teaching Walt to do something. That's true. You know, it's Walt, like yeah, it's almost like a kind of like a not fatherly vibe, but like a teacher. Yeah, that's true. We're giving him the benefit of the doubt because yeah. he had that <laughs> orange scene and he just seemed really cool. Yeah. So we cut to Jen, who's still going around offering people food. 
He finds Claire and offers her some food, and after a little persuasion, she gives in, and then she feels the baby move. Yay! I know, it's so cute. And Jin looks like he wishes he were anywhere else. (laughs) (laughs) I kind of like Jin in this scene. Yeah. It it definitely adds some humanity to him, to see him so awkward. (laughs) It's such a guy response. Do you know what I mean? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) He's like, whoa, okay, I don't want to touch your tummy, lady. (laughs) Right. No thanks. (laughs) And she's just, like, so happy. She doesn't even notice. It's cute. Yeah, she just... I forget. Her name is Emily Duravin, I think her name is. She's great. Yeah. She's really sweet. Yeah. She brings, like, a good lightness. And I find Claire very sweet. Sometimes a little flat, but... Yeah, me too. She's she's a nice girl. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, back on the mountain, Saeed and Sawyer are arguing about the radio, and they get interrupted by a polar bear. You know. Yeah, <laughs> as you do. Sometimes when you're in the jungle, you just run into a polar bear. Look, we've all had that situation where we're hiking on a mountain <laughs> in the jungle, and a polar bear runs out. It happens. Okay. It happens to me all the time. Yeah. <laughs> So Sawyer pulls out a gun and shoots it. Because Sawyer came prepared. (laughs) I mean, (laughs) that's one way to put it, I guess. (laughs) He just shot a bear. (laughs) Oh, God. (laughs) And he's right. It's a good thing he had that gun. (sighs) Okay. (laughs) I just, yeah, even when, before he shoots it, when he's arguing with Saeed about the radio, it's like, why are you here? What is your purpose? (laughs) But anyway, on the beach, Jack takes the shrapnel out of the injured man, and Hurley uh, helps slash passes out. (laughs) Whoops. Hurley's great. (laughs) Back on the mountain, the group is pretty confused about where the heck a polar bear just came from. They ask Sawyer where he got a gun, and he says there was a U.S. Marshal on the plane. Kate takes the gun from Sawyer, and with Saeed's help, takes it apart. And there's some pretty great lines in this whole scene. Yeah, there were. I wrote down some of them because I would like love them. Yeah. I love when Sawyer says, I know your type, girls like you. And Kate says, no girls exactly like me. <sighs> yeah. I feel like that's Sawyer, again, trying to categorize everybody, just thinking he instantly knows everyone. Right. And he, he goes on, he's like, okay, Saeed's the terrorist. I'll be the criminal. He just assumes that role, even though we all... Okay, we don't know. The audience doesn't know. But Sawyer knows he's not the criminal. And yet he's like, sure, I'll be the criminal. Like, yeah. they're all just playing some game. Right. It's... Yeah. He's so hard to figure out. I hate that when he pulls Kate to him, when she's handing him back pieces of the gun. Mm-hmm. It just seems, like, so menacing. It's like, oh, get yeah. away from me. Yeah, I think you can read that, like, very predatory. Yeah. Or... Like, very sexual. Yes, one of the two. I don't like it. <laughs> yeah. I can see that. <laughs> I can definitely see that. So, we flash back to Kate on the plane. She's in handcuffs, and she's sitting next to the U.S. Marshal. plane starts to crash, and Kate unlocks her handcuffs. Something falls from the overhead compartment and knocks him out. She puts a mask on him. See, she's kind of nice, even though she's clearly a criminal. Right, which is shocking. <laughs> Yeah, I was, like, totally surprised that it was Kate. Yeah, it's so surprising. It's a great reveal. Yeah, it is. You know, I feel like we're definitely setting up, like, Jack and Charlie and Kate in this episode as, like, these are our leaders. And then to know, like, Kate is a criminal, like, maybe we shouldn't be trusting this girl. Right, it's like, who are any of these people, really? Yeah. But yeah, it's a good scene. And it also calls back to when we first see her coming out of, when she comes across Jack. Before she sews him up and she's like, she's like rubbing her wrist mm-hmm. in part one. Yeah, I remember that. It's a good detail. On the beach, the U.S. Marshal wakes up and asks Jack, where is she? And then we kind of have our final scene here. Back on the mountain, Saeed decides to try the radio. It works, but he's unable to transmit a message out because another message is coming in. It's a distress call and it's in French. Shannon translates. A woman is pleading for help, and she says the others all died and something killed them. Saeed says the message has been playing on a loop for 16 years as the radio goes dead. Charlie looks around and says, where are we? And we cut to credits. I love in that scene that they ask, who speaks French? And like, nobody answers. And Boone is like, 
Shannon speaks French. And Shannon's like, no, I don't. I don't speak French. I can't do that. <laughs> and then she totally can. Right. Like, she just didn't. I just, I find that so interesting that you would just completely deny knowing a language that you know. I find it relatable because I feel like Boone says she spent a year there and she's like, I was drinking, not studying. <laughs> so I feel like, like if I was in that situation and like say this woman was speaking Spanish and someone looked at me and they were like, you speak Spanish. And I'd be like, cause I studied abroad in Spain. Uh-huh. I'd be like, um, no, I don't. Like, I don't want, like, <laughs> I'm so stressed out about this situation. This is terrifying. Like, I, no. Yeah. So yeah. I find it relatable. <laughs> No, I can see that. And I feel like that's just, um, that's a lack of confidence. Yeah. Worrying that you won't be good enough to do what they need you to do. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. That's the second time that you have said that you would be doing oh what Shannon is doing. <laughs> oh, no. Hmm. <laughs> that's, I don't know how I feel about that, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's really funny. <laughs> but yeah, I love. I love that last scene. I think that's my favorite in this whole episode. It's just like, it's so frantic. It goes from the radio's working and you feel like this elation. And then it gets creepy real fast when they, <laughs> you know, when Shannon starts translating and then you've got Sawyer in the background. He's just seriously making it his mission to like, like he's just like everything he says, everyone. I don't know how many times people told him to shut up in this episode, but it had to have been at least <laughs> 10. It's, it's just great. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like it ends on just the perfect lost note, you know, like lost is so great at sucking you in and intriguing you and then leaving you totally hanging. Right. (laughs) Definitely. We learned something really interesting. We learned uh, this French message has been playing for years. Somebody is trying to get off the island. Mm -hmm. What does this mean? And then boom episode's done see you next week oh it's so good it's so, it's so good. good so did you find any thematic question come to you because i had a big one the one that i kind of thought about was like fate like free will versus Ooh. fate slash destiny wow jumping right into the big stuff i mean i don't really think they go into too much detail mm-hmm. in these two parts but i could kind of see where I could see the beginnings of it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. I mean, Charlie literally writes fate on his hand. Right. And that's why when he did that, I was like, oh, that's something. Yeah. And then I feel like when Locke was explaining backgammon to Walt and he comments about light and dark. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it just made me think of like fate. What made their plane crash on this island? Clearly, they're not the first ones who've crashed here because of the... You know, the message that's been playing for 15 years. Right. Like, again, I feel like they don't, they'll definitely go into this theme. It's a big one, like a lot more later on. But yeah. that was the one that kind of stood out to me. What about you? What I was pulling was a little more literal than yours. I just felt like this whole episode was kind of like an exercise in how people react under stress. I, f- I feel like that's how we learned who everybody was. Like this horrible thing just happened, this plane crash. It's a life or death situation. Mm-hmm. And we saw who they are in a situation like that. And I think you see the best in people and the worst. A lot of the characters even said things that like pointed at that. Like Charlie was walking with them in the jungle and he was like, well, every trek needs a coward. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, <laughs> mm-hmm. As if, like, he's always the coward in the situation. And in the beginning, when the we're going through the plane wreckage, you can see Charlie in the background of a lot of shots, and he's just walking around. He's not doing anything. Yeah. He's just kind of aimless. And Kate tells Jack, if she had been doing that operation with the girl, that she would have run, because that's what she does when she's under stress. And... Mm -hmm. Jack's like, no, you wouldn't, because look at you right now. Uh, And Jack, like, clearly, like, throws himself into the situation, and he just wants to fix everything. He, like, focuses focuses on everybody else. That's so true. The way they set everyone up in here is really fascinating. Yeah, and Shannon. Shannon's, like, a great example. (laughs) (laughs) It's like, what do you do in a stressful situation? 
Like, what do any of us do? I think a lot of us react in all these different ways. They're all acting like the way somebody would act. Somebody would be screaming their head off right. and somebody would be running around trying to help everyone. Right. And then someone like Boone would be trying to help everyone, but would be failing miserably. Yes, doing it wrong. <laughs> But trying. Yeah. <laughs> so that was like what I saw the most. Like I just kept thinking like this is how we're learning who these characters are. Mm, I like that. That's really interesting. So overall, what do you feel like draws you in from this episode? Like what makes you want to keep watching? A couple of different things. I feel like definitely the last scene where they're listening to the message from the French woman. Yeah. And... Especially just that detail that's been playing for 16 years. It's so unbelievably creepy. Yeah. Like that draws me in. And also just the characters. Cause Lost is such a character driven show mm -hmm. that, you know, everyone from Kate, who's just revealed to have been in the handcuffs to Charlie, who's obviously got this drug problem to Sawyer, who's doing his thing to Locke. Like I really, the other thing is I really want to know. I need to know everything about all of these people. Yeah, exactly. That's how I feel too. I'm just super intrigued by all these characters and I need to know who they all are. Yeah. I need to know why Sun is rebelliously popping her buttons. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> I need mm -hmm. to know everything. And the polar bear, like, really sticks out to me too. Oh, right. I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always like, what on earth? What is this show? Why? I don't understand how this is even like physically possible. <laughs> yeah. It's, they throw so much crazy stuff at you. Yeah. In his first pilot. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. And really, when you think about it, plot wise, not a ton happens in this episode. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't see the plane crash really. We just show up when it's already happened. Right. And they go to the cockpit, get the transceiver, the pilot dies, and then they go to the hill and hear the message from the French woman. That's it, really. <laughs> that's that's the plot. <laughs> right. And yet we're so sucked in by just the strength of these characters and their personalities. And that's it. I feel like if you're really going to be into this show, you've got to connect with all the like you've got to care about all the characters. Yeah. Or at least care about the ones that you like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't think you'll ever care about all of them. <laughs> right. But like you want to know more about, yeah, like you said, your favorites. Yeah. Well, I think that will do it for this monstrous first episode. Yes. This was a two-part episode, so they shouldn't all be this long, but... No. <laughs> I think it was time well spent. <laughs> I do too. And I think like, obviously, even though they were shown a week apart, they go hand in hand, the first two parts. Definitely. So. It's one narrative story. So yeah. it wouldn't really make much sense to break it apart. No, it would not. <laughs> but yeah, I'm excited about this. I'm excited about the next episode. Me too. I'm so excited to start getting into the week by week Lost. Yeah. I feel like the first season of Lost is pretty great. Season one is like my favorite. Is it? It's the one I know the, the most. Yeah. The one I've seen the most probably. Yeah. It's pretty fantastic. Yeah. Which is again, so crazy because usually first seasons of television shows, at least some of my favorite shows are my least favorite. Yeah. They have to find their footing. Exactly. Lost is immediately like, this is what we're doing and we're doing it well. The writers like clearly knew what they were doing. Definitely. So we'll see you guys next week. I'm Randy. And I'm Tiffany. And this has been Freckles and Blondie.